Birthday boy makes it 10 0. What a season for Cornish. Dion Beasley tripped up near the 35, just past the 35 yard line. Back to John Cornish, though. And I know this has been the year of all the milestones and record breakers, the year of the Woo! kicker as well. It's been the year Hot of today. the Canadian tailback. Well, that's been one of the great themes this season. And huge Got shout out to Jerome there. Messam. First Canadian running back to go over a thousand yards since 2000. So he reached that milestone last night in the Edmonton Eskimos victory. John Cornish has been outstanding. Andrew Harris, terrific prior to his injury as well. Alex Brink to Clarence Denmark. Bombers looking to respond here. Denmark. Make an outstanding rookie season up near the 50 yard line. Clarence Denmark, arguably the most versatile of the Winnipeg Blue Bomber receivers. Like to bring him in motion, use him on those reverses as well, so they give a little bit of that look with the cross motion to hit him in the flat. 14 yards on that play, their first first down of the game. They had 11 yards in total, their first three drives. Under three to go, first quarter. Brink hands off to Garrett, who just... Gets swallowed up by that scrum. And very similar to the situation with the Calgary Stampeders on second and long. And the pressure the Bombers are showing. The same can be said for the Stampeder defense that has really picked it up in this last half of the season. Yeah, and we know this is the, the trademark of a Chris Jones defense. Jamie Barisi, Winnipeg's offensive coordinator, needs to find the answers. But we'll see the DBs, particularly safeties, down close to the line of scrimmage a lot in situations like this. Pass protection. Johnny Dixon, and if he did, it was six. Looking for Aaron Hargraves, and again, the Bombers' kick team comes out. And the Calgary Stampeders mixed it up defensively on that one, rushing just three men, dropping nine into coverage. Everything well covered, allowing Johnny Dixon to be so aggressive, jumping this route. Aaron Hargraves unable to shield him out on that one. Interception narrowly avoided. Again, Jamie Bourne. Mike Brill was the punter for most of the season until Warren came in late in the season, and he has it blocked. It's blocked. The Bombers look like they're going to pick it up. They do, or they don't. Warren now kicks it away. It's still loose. Calgary has the football again. On a wild play. The Calgary Stampeders get the ball back again. Well, I don't think Chris McCoy was even trying to block this football, but just realized, oh, I'm standing right here and he hasn't kicked it yet, so I may as well stick out my hand. And he comes up with the gift. Big defensive lineman, number 90 out on special teams on the left side. Beat the deep back, Clint Kent to the inside. And that's the place when you're in that position, you've got to make sure you block inside out. Former seventh round pick of the NFL, the Miami Dolphins out of Middle Tennessee State. McCoy has the block. Stan Peters are on a roll here. Cornish again. Cornish continuing to produce for the Calgary Stan Peters on those critical first downs we talked about in the pregame. Stan Peters, a team actually comes out of the gate pretty strong plus 15 over first quarters their nemesis seems to be that second quarter we'll see how it plays out here a couple of turnovers already 10-0 lead through Tate sideline and unable to get to Robbie Bryant there's a penalty flag on the play Dion Beasley in coverage and was this a late hit on Drew Tate it looks like Doug Brown would be the guilty party. Major foul, roughing the passer, Winnipeg number 97. 15-yard penalty, first down. There is big Doug Brown all over Drew Tate. And it was late on Tate, and Doug Brown, whose career has come full circle. This is his last season. Began 
10 years ago. His first regular season game was right here in Calgary. He was a former staff, but was playing with the Blue Bombers. Actually scored a touchdown in his first game on a fumble recovery. Final regular season game here in Calgary again. Tate has loads of time. To take the goes down as Dion Beasley and Jason Vega converged. Well, Tate did well to avoid the hit from Dion Beasley on that one. It looked like both guys lost their footing as some of yesterday's snow is melting into the turf. And you know the way the drainage is in the stadium and so on. It's starting to get a little bit slick towards the outside of the fields out around those numbers. It'll be second down and eight yards. They have to get down near the three-yard line. Stampeders, barring penalty, final play of the opening quarter. Tate to the goal line, and it's a touchdown! Kenyon Rambo! And Drew Tate and Jonathan Hefney going at it, and now Cornish is into it. But Kenyon Rambo comes back into the lineup and takes it into the end zone. Well, Rambo's timing couldn't be better coming back against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. He now extends his touchdown streak against the Bombers to four games. Not bad for a guy who's missed the last four games, Dwayne. And then Drew Tate joins the fray, the celebration, and watch this. Well, Tate looked like he didn't like the what he perceived as a late shove from Jonathan Hefney. And there's a late smack by Hefney. Len Johnson will sort it out. Let's be some penalties applied to the kickoff. Well, Drew Tate is also a very intense guy. And a very confident guy. And has shown over the last three games, he's ready for prime time. Well, after the touchdown, we have an objectionable conduct on Calgary. We have an unnecessary roughness on Winnipeg. It's net five yards. We'll go up half the distance to the goal of the convert and try the convert. But it is a touchdown. Calgary Stampeders, and there's Drew Tate again. Does not like anybody around him on the sideline. Usually finds a spot on the bench. He goes back to his high school days when his dad was the coach. Soft-spoken Texan. The biggest guy in the world, but a guy who is doing big things right now for the Stampeders. Well, Drew Tate absolutely oozes confidence. Oh, it's not arrogance, just confidence. A confident quarterback has his Stampeders ahead. 17-0 after one quarter. Thanks to that latest touchdown by Kenyon Rambo. Huge start for the Calgary Stampeders. Still hoping and trying to play for a home playoff date. Fumble and a block kick. The difference right now, 14 points off of turnovers. They lead 17 to nothing. Beyond the turnovers, though, Drew Tate continues to amaze everyone with his abilities. Again, this is a guy who started as a backup behind Henry Burris, obviously has learned very well. Yeah, he has. Drew Tate's time has clearly come. He's ready for this role, and, and he's delivered. And you talk to his teammates, to a man, they're not surprised a bit by the early success of their quarterback. Drew Tate has a lot of confidence, as we talked about. Uh, one of the things that he also does, and we've seen it today, is that he really likes to get everybody involved. He doesn't really have a primary target. He has a number of them. Yeah, and that, a lot of that is the nature of the Calgary Stampeders offense, and has been for a number of years when you think of John Huffnagel coach teams, even going back to the early 90s. Small bounces and a bounds, and uh, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are likely going to make Rene Paradis and the Stampeders do it again while they're going to bring their offense out. So the ball went out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Again, the Bombers have the win now. Illegal kickoff out of bounds. Calgary number 30. Winnipeg, first down at the 45. So they'll take it at the 45, and why not? All Police and his offense trying to generate some momentum here. Twice shut out, one 
quarter this season. See if the win has anything to do with it. Out of the backfield is Garrett. Up near midfield. Spot is about a yard shy of the first down. Uh, that 17 point deficit after one quarter, the largest the Blue Bombers have faced so far this season through 15 minutes. It'll be up to Alex Brink here to lead them back. You just hope from a play calling point of view that this is a team. Chris Garrett's been very productive. Don't abandon the run and try and get 17 points back all at once. Looks like he stopped in a. The spot is at midfield for the first down. It looks like they may have to measure this. Uh, joining us on the sidelines today is Sarah Orleski. Let's bring her in. Sarah? Rod, we saw the Bombers offense struggle in that first quarter, and there's no doubt that what would help is having Terrence Edwards back on the field. He's been sidelined, though. It's the inside of his elbow. He's not sure what caused it. Right now, he's trying to let it settle down. He thinks he'll be able to play again, but right now, you're not going to be seeing him on the field in the next few series. Yeah, still shaking that right arm, as you can see on the far sideline. It's a third and inches play now for Brink. And he'll get it. And that's really where Alex Brink has been used for the most of the season behind Buck Pierce is in the short yardage situations. And now, last couple of games, getting his turn. Yeah, and you can see by the way he ran that quarterback sneak, he's become quite competent in that role through the season. Again, something that his counterpart today, Drew Tate, had been doing for most of the season behind Henry Burris. Funny how things turn. First and ten balls. Just into Calgary territory. Firing over the middle, and a nice catch made by Corey Watson, the Canadian receiver, out of Concordia. Corey Watson with another Winnipeg first down. Well, Watson comes from the outside. He moves out. As a result, or excuse me, he's going to be in the slot here, but he's going to run that in route. Nice dive and catch by Watson, the Bombers nominee for most outstanding Canadian. Alex Brink trying to bark out the signals here. And out of the backfield, shot down. Play for Watson again. Again, Quincy Butler read the play perfectly. Another throwing situation here. Stampeders have had to do some shuffling as well in their secondary, bringing Quincy Butler in. And Butler, this is actually his second go around with the Calgary Stampeders. He was with them for a stretch in 2008 before taking another NFL shot. Feels he's more prepared, knows the lead a little bit better in this opportunity. Movement on the line. Justin Phillips jumped, but he's pointing at the bomber O-line. And is this procedure against Winnipeg? Procedure, Winnipeg, number 59. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. Andre Douglas out of Temple University. Second-year Blue Bomber was the most outstanding rookie a year ago. Now Andre Douglas, the left tackle, knowing he's going to be pass blocking, twitches a little bit early. Trying to get into his set. Well, makes this conversion even tougher for the Bombers. Second and 15 now. Second quarter, 17-point deficit. Here's the rush. Brink fumbles again. The Bombers have it. But once again, the Stampeders with some serious pressure. Demetrius Morley in and all over Alex Brink. Well, and, and then it's one of the quirky stats of the Calgary Stampeders when you look. Charleston Hughes leads this team in sacks. The number two guy coming from the bottom right corner of your screen, that's the free safety, number 31, Demetrius Morley. Second on this team in sacks. The Bombers recognize it. Glenn January picks it up, but a free safety on an offensive tackle, that's just a speed mismatch around the corner. Morley gets it done and forces his fourth fumble of the season. Jamie Bora. Big disparity between these two teams in sacks this season. Here's our sack tally brought to you by Purelater tackling hunger across Canada. Check. You wouldn't know it so far here today, though. No, the Calgary Stampeders have done a good job 
creating second and short situations. Good first down production. There's been Odell Willis and the boys haven't been able to go full throttle. Drew Tate pulls it back to play action. Going deep down the sideline. And that's his man. And once again, it's Kenyon Randall making an immediate impact into this lineup today. Yeah, if you're wondering how that Achilles tendon is doing for Kenyon Rambo, pretty good. The early review says just fine. Rambo lines up at the number two position out to that wide side of the field. He's in the slot. He's going to get out and then up the sideline on a bit of a wheel route. The corner, Brandon Stewart, was late to react to it, and that's the moment where Drew Tate spotted Rambo. And with those super slots back in action again, Kenyon Rambo and Nick Lewis together. Only makes the Stampeders better. We haven't heard from Lewis yet today. Expect to, however. Lamarcus Coker's back in the Stampeder lineup. Missed the last two games. And because of Coker being in the lineup, that means Joffrey Reynolds is out of the lineup. And that's been a story here as well this year in Calgary. Uh, lots of conversation in recent days about the CFL player poll. Chris Williams voted the fastest player in the league by his peers. I suspect that LaMarcus Coker might have garnered a few more votes had he been able to see a little bit more action prior to the ballots going out. Bothered by an ankle sprain the last couple of games. He's in the backfield again. Takes the ball, right side. Little shimmy, the shimmy. Coker also making an impact here <laughs> with his whole lineman as well. That was that was a little awkward, but that's yeah. okay. Yeah, first game back off the injured list. I don't know if you want to go with the physical celebrations with your O-line. You see that whole offensive line reaching to the right. The receivers did a tremendous job pinning men down to the inside. There's one from Romby Bryant outside in. And that puts Lamarcus Coker one on one on Brandon Stewart. Great juke. Puts the stamps, first and goal. All the talk about the Bomber defense so far. It's been Calgary's offense. Larry Taylor trying to punch it in. And we frequently see Larry Taylor come into the ball game in their red zone, or I would even go as far as to call it a first and goal package for the Calgary Stampeders. Let's try to get him the ball in space, whether it's with a handoff like that or a high percentage. Who would, have, who would have thought week 18 on the verge of the playoffs and Henry Burris comes into the game in short yardage situations. And Henry had a little bit of trouble with the quarterback sneak a week ago. See how weak of that this is helped him. Burris, touchdown! Nice execution on the, on the option play. Good read, good decision from the veteran QB, Henry Burris. It's a new role, but he's still going to do his part to try and help this team win. How about this Calgary Stampeders start here today? They are playing demolition derby with the Blue Bombers right now. Well, two teams both with a lot at stake. Winnipeg looking for that first round by the Stampeders, just trying to keep their hopes of a home game alive. Well, they're doing a good job with that right now. They lead 24 to nothing. 